Corey Blair, thanks for joining us on the Onelite channel. And we are in the midst of this shutdown, hoping that it will be lifted at some point in the near future. But we wanted to follow up with some some of the people in small business and find out what, how they're surviving and what this has meant to them. Uh, tell us a little bit, if you would, about your business and uh, how you're surviving this shutdown. Well, thanks for having me, Terry. Um, for core installation, um, I started the business back in December of 2018. Um, it was basically um, kind of a necessity. The company I used to work for went under, and so it was, what am I going to do? I've been in the industry for about 25 years selling office furniture, and so it just seemed like the right thing to do. Um, but we were really going gangbusters. Um, I was probably about two to three months away from hiring my installer full time. Um, that was going to be huge. Uh, then this all hit and it has really taken a toll. I had some projects um, on the books that, you know, nobody knows when anybody's going to be able to go back to work. Nobody knows what's going to happen. And so a lot of those have now dried up. Companies don't want to spend the money on furniture when they don't know what the future looks like. Are they going to be mandated instead of, you know, people smashed together in cubicles? Are they going to be mandated to keep six feet safe distancing at the office? And how long is that? And is that going to require changes in furniture and things like that? Um, so for me, it's been um, a little bit of a change and a challenge. Um, I didn't qualify for the PPP loan because I had not put anybody on payroll. So that stunk. Um, and I had done the SBA application, um, but that funding is all gone, I guess. And so it's a little bit frustrating right now just to try to figure out what's next, um, how to make sure that everything keeps going. Uh, I know I'm very fortunate because I do have more than just the installation and the furniture side. I also do the supplies. And so I've kind of created a couple of different things to help diversify. Tell us, tell but, us, well, I was going to say, tell us about that and some of the things that you're using to keep some uh, money coming in the door right now. <laughs> well, fortunately, um, I am certified with the state of Illinois. And so I'm certified with the CMS uh, BEP program. So I'm actually a WBE for the state of Illinois. Um, as well as I'm an economically disadvantaged woman owned small business for the federal government. And so I've been and keeping on the state to help supply um, emergency supplies for the COVID testing sites. So um, we were able to do that. Um, and then in the meantime, I'm also working with some of the um, small business owners trying to do little care packages for their employees. Uh, if you think about the fact that all of a sudden everybody went straight home and now you, a lot of people are dealing with working at their dining room table. So their back is killing them. They're used to having a printer, but home printers use way more ink than what you ever realize when you only print a couple of times a month maybe. And now all of a sudden you're at home and you're having to print document after document. So the care package that I did um, basically is two reams of paper, a small, small notepad, a pad of sticky notes, you know, and highlighter, paper clips, a couple of ink pens, and it's all put together with a, either the employer can put in a little note to the employee about, you know, thank you for doing your part um, or other things that they want to put in. And I deliver that um, to each individual employee's doorstep here in central Illinois. Um, and that's $15. I've also been, uh, I was able to get in with a company and do uh, disposable face masks. So we put in an order last Friday for 3,000 of them. They're already sold. Um, I'm going to put another order in this Friday. Um, had you, had you ever sold face masks before? I suspect <laughs> no. not, right? <laughs> no, not even remotely. Um, face so, masks. But, but you know what? I want to pause there and because to say this is this is what business people do. They're creative and they think, Problem, solution, problem, solution. The problem is I'm shut down. I can't sell what I used to sell. So look at how flexible you have to be and and go oh, and, and take on a new product line. First, you got to find it, get it, and then and then also sell it. Uh, but you su successfully have done that. So I think one thing that I love about small business people is that they are right there, that creative and uh, that they... 
They don't panic. They just kind of, they might internally <laughs> panic, but you, uh, at the same time, you got no one when you're the person running the store, you, no one to go and cry to or complain to. It's you that has to roll up your sleeves and get it done. Nobody else is going to make my house payments. So yeah, it, uh, it's, it's, it's been interesting. Um, for instance, uh, one of the things that I have recently procured was uh, 250 traffic cones. Never sold a traffic cone in my life, but we just sold 250 of them. So, um, Interesting. you know, how, how did, <laughs> how did that come about? I mean, that's, that's one I didn't know about. Uh, the COVID testing sites, there's a huge list of emergency products. So traffic cones, um, refrigerators, whiteboards, uh, different things like that, that, um, Basically, the email goes out to all of the VEP vendors, and it's who can reply first, who can get the product the fastest, get the product delivered the fastest, and then the price. And so um, I was able to put together quite a bit there um, and then actually go to the actual testing sites to deliver. And that was interesting. I was at the uh, McLean testing site the day before it opened. And um, a lot of what you don't realize is how much the National Guard is there doing these testing sites. Uh, these are obviously the state-run ones. Right. How big of an um, area do you, by the way, sell to? <laughs> well, um, I get to go anywhere. Um, that is what is beautiful about what I do. Um, we recently, a couple months ago, did a installation at the Nashville, Tennessee airport. Um, one of the projects that I had coming up was Minneapolis Airport, um, but that has been put on indefinite hold. I uh, had another project I'm working on in Los Angeles. So um, part of what I have done in the past is I had a nationwide um, account and the designer that I created this relationship with, she and I still work together. And so I can go anywhere. And so does she. So it's been a lot of fun to be able to do that. And I'm hoping that things get back to normal so I can go back to doing that kind of projects. When you when you talk, you know, it's interesting. We've heard stories growing up about how some successful businesses launched in the middle of the Great Depression. And so, uh, you know, if you can control your cost and, and you have more income coming in, that's basically what it's all about to be in business. But uh, when you talk to people, <clears throat> other people in business, and you talk to certain people, even if they're your customers or potential customers, what are they telling you? What are they? What are you hearing from other people as you network about what people are doing and how how hard is it to survive? Number one, and then let me just roll into a second question: If you had the word uh, uh, or the ear of the governor or others in government what would they what could they be doing for the small business person that would help them um first yes there are a lot of small businesses like myself that are out there that didn't qualify for the ppp that missed out um i put my emergency sba application in on april 1st and i still it was in processing didn't get the funding. Um, I have a good friend that she just opened up a hair salon about three or four months ago. She still has to pay her rent, but she can't work at all. She can't diversify. Um, she did go ahead and she had some hats made that helped kind of help do that. Um, and they're actually really cute. It says uh, quarantine hair don't care and it's got the name of her salon on the side. It's really a neat idea. And she sold them to did porch delivery and the idea was to just try to get some income rolling in. Um, but, you know, small businesses are hurting. They're trying to figure out a new way to work, a new way to um, meet with clients and get in front of people. But at the same time, you don't want to be, for lack of a better word, tacky. Um, you don't want to use this as a way to get in front of people and, you know, push something. But at the same time, if you can fulfill a need, then by all means, do it that way. Um, so I think that's been the hardest thing is talking to people that we just don't know what's next. We don't know how long this short shutdown is gonna go. So people don't wanna spend money on a decent desk chair if they're gonna be back in the office by the end of the month. But at the same time, their back is killing them. They're frustrated, they're having a hard time. And especially you add in the fact that the kids are at home trying to homeschool. 
So there's just a whole new level of trying to make it all work. Um, the second part of your question, if I had the ear of the governor and if I could actually get in front of somebody, make it so that small businesses can actually get in, survive. Um, I do theoretically qualify for unemployment on the 15th or the 16th of April for that to actually come live on IDES that said that I could go ahead and apply. Um, I've got a couple of other things happening, so I, I haven't taken advantage of that myself yet, but it it's hard for those of us that are trying to make house payments and trying to figure out what's next, how we're going to survive this, that type of thing. Um, so that's a little rough, I think. Um, just making it so that the funding needs to be there. Um, and, you know, I don't think the governor can control that. I think a lot of that's coming from the federal government as well. But well, and now we have this uh, political standoff with the uh, House uh, Democrats not not wanting to pass a new funding bill to put money back into these programs uh, until they get some of what they want. And so once again, the American people are the people that are victimized by a political tug of war. The thing that I read earlier um, this morning was that the Shake Shack had, um, they had actually returned their loan money. And I thought that was a really nice gesture. I think it was like $10 million. But what on earth is, the, you know, why are these huge corporations able to get into these PPPs with no problem, but yet the small business owner, the, you know, is close, close, but I don't have payroll. Um, so I needed that SBA loan. Um, that SBA loan said that you fill out all the information and you'll get a reply in three days. And like I said, I filled it out April 1st. I made a phone call last week. I was caller 1,540 something. Um, and I sat on hold for about 45 minutes and finally talked to someone and all she could tell me was that they had it. It was in processing, but she couldn't tell me anything more than that. And as soon as it was either um, approved or denied, I'd get an email. And that was all she could tell me. She couldn't tell me how long it was going to take. And now we find out that, you know, the funding's not there. So. And, you know, here's, actually, here's a simple thing if, uh, if for, for those in government. When you're sitting on the phone for an hour, that's an hour you can't be making calls to try to get more business in. And why don't they just have someone quickly answer a phone, take your name and number and say, we'll call you back so that the business person doesn't have to be sitting on the phone, unable to do their business. And then when the government processes the calls, they'll call you back and do it. Uh, after five o'clock, don't don't just be having your people running out the door at four thirty or five, because this is not the normal time. And if we're going to have the governor be doing his thing every, you know, seven days a week, let, let's ask the uh, state officials or local officials, uh, government people, to say, put your shoulder to the wheel. This isn't normal times. You might have to be working after hours uh, to make America work again. Uh, well, and I mean, for me. I started this business um, completely debt free, trying to, um, part of starting the business was that uh, I didn't want to ever have to worry about going out and selling the product, but then not being able to fulfill an order because um, I've worked for people where you end up on credit hold and you can't place the order for the product. So I'd go out and do all the work and then turn around and I can't order the product. And that was so frustrating. And that's part of why I started CORE. And that's also why I've done it the way I have, where, you know, I only do what I can do as far as I can do it. And then, you know, I just have to let people know um, I have to take deposits because my people want deposits. Um, there are tons and tons of larger businesses that are going out of business right now. Um, I have a friend that actually they just got stuck with $75,000 in receivables from one client because they went under um, already. And so that's frightening for me. So that's why I try really, really hard to make sure that my receivables are low. I don't have the credit um, issues because of that. Um, thank God. Now I get a little bit bigger and I, I already know that that can't sustain forever. But right now where I'm at, I'm, I'm very fortunate that 
I'm where I'm at with all of this going on, because if I was any other way, I think I would already have been sunk. Corey Blair, we, we've put your website up and hopefully uh, some people, if they're interested in getting some of the products that you're selling and, and uh, uh, they'll get, get a hold of you. Um, there's Definitely. many more things we could talk about, so maybe we can follow up with you another time. We know you have to go and do something else, so we'll let you go for now. But uh, we appreciate, appreciate you joining it. us on the online channel. Thanks, Terry. Thank you.